welcome to this video. You are watching the February update to the wardrobe architect challenge and yes, I am behind. Let's just admit it. Um, I had a hard time doing some of the to-dos for February which included clearing out your closet, doing a closet inventory. inventory. Very intimidating, uh, but as well finding your color palette that was the other half of February. But I do want to give you guys an update on how that went and show you a couple clips and you know my progress and things like that. And uh, if you're watching this video in this week that I'm uploading it, the following week during the end of this month in March, I will have the March update which is a lot more fun and less intimidating. I'll be filming that soon, maybe after this video. But today I do want to talk to you guys about exactly what's been going on, the closet clean out, how that went. And um, however, before I get to that, if you're joining me for the first time and you're wondering what in the world I'm rambling about, the Wardrobe Architect Challenge is a year-long, uh, so long wardrobe consolidating style defining overhaul project uh, led by the lovely folks at Culinary. So I'll leave their link down below if you want to check out uh, kind of the whole project and how that separated into different months. But for February, it was the closet inventory clear out as well as finding your color palette so that in March, this month, which I have been doing, uh, we can start looking at exactly which projects I'm going to sew and what color of fabric I'm going to choose. But to get on with the closet cleaning, so intimidating, so overwhelming. I actually realized I don't have a lot of clothes per se, but just the process of actually doing this very systematically, they gave you a worksheet, you put down every single item of clothing that you own by category and rate it by how much you love that piece and uh, how often that you wear it on a scale of one to five. Five being love it, love it, love it, wear it all the time. So a revelation I suppose I had while doing um, my clear out was that some of the pieces that I don't love, like I like them but I don't love them, are the ones I often that I wear most often. Yet the ones that I rate it as a five, you know, I love this piece of clothing, I don't wear it as often. Mostly because, now that I'm thinking about it, um, the clothing pieces that I love are very specific. For example, you gotta have the right shoe to go with this piece of clothing, you gotta have the right uh, coat. Uh, it's got to be the right weather I can't wear when it's raining and pouring outside. You know, hello Vancouver. Um, and things like that. You know, the right occasions to wear this piece of clothing. A lot of the clothing pieces I rate a 5 are very situational, which is strange. You'd think that I would be able to get um, clothing that I love and I can wear on a regular basis, but doesn't seem to be the case. There are a couple pieces which I love and which I do wear all the time and which you guys have probably seen it all the time because I wear in videos. However, as a whole, that seems to be uh, a bit of a discrepancy right there. But uh, also looking at my wardrobe, I don't have a lot of uh, clothing items. Surprisingly, when I went through the count, you know, I probably had about, I'm going to ballpark it, maybe 80 pieces of clothing, not including, you know, the sweatshirts and the t-shirts that you wear. Uh, to hang around the house and cook and things like that. Um, you know, actual nice presentable pieces. Probably 70 pieces, 280 pieces, um, covering most of the seasons. So, not too terrible. But um, I also found that a lot of the clothing that I love, and I've been, you know, trying to do this in the past couple of years, just get things that I love, I love them as singular pieces. I would love this sweater, I would love this skirt, I would love this blouse, but they don't look like they come from um, someone's closet, like a single person's closet. They would actually look like they come from the closet of a couple of different people. So does that mean my style is confused? Maybe it is. I was talking to one of my um, friends about this and I'm going through this wardrobe overhaul and sewing project. And she told me the same thing. She says, I've been getting into this certain style, but then I also love this and I also love that, but they don't go together co cohesively. And she says that she doesn't mind. Now for me, because I've been working through this wardrobe architect challenge and, you know, um, trying to define my style and the type of things that I love and exactly what style I want to work towards and what type of identity I want to have in that sense, I want my style and my wardrobe to be cohesive. And right now it's not. Um, and another part that plays into this is that I don't like layering. I usually love a singular piece worn on its own, it's got to have enough substance and you know color and interest or something about it. I don't need to layer so many pieces together. I um, I just don't really layer. I'll do a shirt, maybe a top, 
and then a jacket, like three layers maximum. I'm not good with the layering. I don't wear a lot of jewelry on an everyday basis. So that takes away, I think, from the um, multi-purposeness of a lot of my clothing items. I love them as singular pieces. I'm not always sure how they go well together and how they come together as a wardrobe, a definitive style, shall we say. So that's the little thing to think about um, while I'm working through my closet. Now, second part of uh, February was, of course, to find your color palette. This was also very difficult, um, and hence why this took so long. So one of their suggestions was actually to go down to the paint store and pick out little paint chips. Paint chips, um, colors that you are attracted to, that really catch your eye, and you know, that you may love to paint with, or that you may want to make clothing out of. So this was helpful to go in there and just see the full spectrum. Now, not exactly the full spectrum, as they don't make all the colors of the rainbow, but a lot of them, the pleasing ones. So I chose a couple here that I really love. Um, in the neutrals family, I think these are all pretty neutral. We have this milk chocolate, which I love. I've also got here this camel color, which I think is gorgeous, but I don't feel like goes with my complexion very well, but I love this camel. Um, also, a sleet, slate gray. Is this what you call it? Slate gray. So a very deep, smoky gray. Love this as a neutral. And recently, I've been really loving this dusty, chalky, pastel gray blue. I think it's beautiful. I have a sweater in this color. You guys have seen it in my Estee Lauder vlog um, that I pulled up recently. I wore this sweater, gorgeous. And then in the colors, I really love raspberry. I actually went through a lot of my makeup and tried to look at what lipsticks I love wearing. For example, this one that I love. Um, you know, certain reds and raspberries and uh, certain pinks that I love wearing. What eyeshadow colors do I love that I feel like makes me feel confident and look good on my skin tone? So raspberry is definitely something I'm looking forward to, although raspberry is a f color that's hard to find in the fabric, um, whether at the fabric store or even in the ready-made item. It's a bit of a, a finicky one. As well, peach. Peach is a color I've recently gone into in the past year, last summer especially, and I love it. I find that peach items tend to really brighten up my skin and make me look all warm and peachy and glowing. And it's a nice color for my complexion. So I'm going to go with more peach in my wardrobe. And then, of course, this blue. Really, really loving this blue. So maybe a couple of um, dusty pastel blue pieces if I can find them. And uh, royal blue is another color I've gone into the past two years, which... I realized look really striking, especially paired with a bolder lip or even a dark, deep cherry lip with um, a dark navy or a dark royal blue, very saturated, almost jewel tone, absolutely beautiful. So those are the colors I'm hoping to work more into my wardrobe and um, help it grow like that. So I think this is more or less the, uh, the wrap up of the February update. Um, there isn't much to see over here because in March, I will be showing you my actual clothing pieces and the patterns and the fabrics, which I've already bought, um, that I decided to sew for my spring and summer wardrobe. So check in next week for that update. Hope that you guys are having a wonderful day. Leave me your thoughts and comments and, you know, how you reflected on this video and how it worked out in your wardrobe and if you are working on this wardrobe architect challenge from Cluttery as well. Pop me comments down below. I'll talk to you very soon. See you on social media. Have a beautiful day. Take care. Bye-bye.